today I wanted to talk about five things you should be aware of when water cooling your PC. Some may be positive, some may be a little bit negative, so stay tuned and find out. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Thank you for joining me for another video. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, leave a comment below. Have you water cooled your PC recently? So water cooling your gaming PC or your workstation is one of the most aesthetically pleasing things that you can do, as well as one of the most intricate and fun, but it does come with a few caveats. There are definitely pluses and minuses. So let's talk about five different things to think about if you're considering water cooling your PC, or if you haven't done it in a while and you're thinking about getting back into it. The first thing we're gonna talk about is time. Now, if you're gonna water cool your PC, if you want better performance, or if you want the aesthetics, you wanna see your liquid go through, there are a lot of very valid reasons but just remember it's going to take considerable more time than building a pc um, that has just an air cooler or an aio or just an air cool gpu now this isn't just in the initial build the initial build is likely going to take hours longer than if you're just slapping a, a computer together with air cooling now this is going to happen in the initial build as well as in the long-term maintenance the initial build is going to take you hours longer than a regular sort of air cooled pc depending how intricate your loop is going to be and if you're going to be bending your tubes by hand you have multiple gpus that's something that's going to definitely take you hours and hours maybe even days some people spend weeks slowly building it so it's something you have to have patience for because it's a little bit more intricate you can't really make mistakes when you're connecting tubing because then you may have some issues later on and of course there are things to mitigate those problems like leak testing and things like that air pressure testing but just remember it's going to take you a lot more time and then for the overall maintenance over time, you may have to do certain things like change out the fluid, or if you have to change out any component of your PC, like the CPU, GPU, sometimes even RAM, depending how your loop is set up, you may have to drain your system just to take that out while in the air-cooled system, you more easily would be able to switch things out without having to drain it. Problems definitely pop up. I've had some systems that were running fine for you know almost a year, and out of nowhere, the coolant started to either separate if it's opaque, or it started to change color or look a little bit funny. So basically when that happens, you have to drain your whole system, uh, flush it out. Sometimes you even have to take apart your GPU or CPU block if they got a little bit gunked up. That's definitely something that takes time, so you definitely have to enjoy doing it. The second point about a water-cooled PC, you're definitely going to get better performance. Now, it's going to be more expensive, so don't think that necessarily that's going to equate to absolutely bonkers performance over air-cooled or, or, or liquid-cooled. You really have to like doing it also for the aesthetics and for the build experience, but you definitely get better performance. Like for example, if you're running something like an NVIDIA Founders Edition GPU, often when you're gaming, you may be around like 73 Celsius or something like that during load. If you water cool it, depending how many radiators you have and how big your loop is, you can go down to somewhere like 42C or even if you're up to 49 or 50 Celsius, that's a huge improvement, meaning that the card isn't going to run as hot. It probably will last longer because you're not putting as much heat stress on it. And it's just going to be quieter and look really cool when it's being water cooled. So you definitely get some pretty big changes. Now on the CPU side, there are also changes, but if you're just cooling the stock CPU, you're not going to get as big a gap as an air cool GPU when you're water cooling um, compared to something like a high-end air cooler or even a very high-end AIO like something from Corsair or an air cooler from Be Quiet. Those generally will perform pretty well already. If you have a CPU like a Threadripper or, or even like a, a 10 core Intel CPU, you can definitely benefit from having water cooling, but it's not going to be as drastic a difference. But keep in mind the difference is definitely there. You're just going to have to pay for it a little bit more than you would if you're doing a more basic system. The third thing about water cooling is that it can get pretty intricate in terms of how you control fans. That's why they make so many different controllers for a water cooled system that are more intricate than something you would use in a regular case. For example, Aqua Computers has been around a long time with their Aqua Aero, where you can control various attributes of your liquid cooled system to it. Um, EK also released a really nice controller that you can do the same. The reason why you may need more intricate control of your system is that you don't necessarily want to run the fan curve off just your CPU because you have both your GPU and CPU often within the same loop 
So basically you could have one or multiple temperature sensors in your loop to see what the water temperature is. And as that heats up, then you can have your fan curve go up. So you don't have to base it specifically on your GPU or your CPU. That's definitely the best way to do it based on water temperature. That way your fans and pump slowly ramp up as you need more cooling performance as the water temperature will gradually get warmer over time and it doesn't spike up as quickly as if you're doing like your CPU temperature. And just keep in mind, you may have to do a little bit more intricate monitoring of your system. Let's not forget your flow. There are many flow meters, some even digital, like with the Aqua computers. I feel these are very important because sometimes you could have some type of restriction in your loop. Maybe you made a mistake building it and these flow meters can actually help you find it because if you see that you're having bad temperatures, because if you notice that you're having bad temperature performance, maybe it's not a component. Maybe there's a restriction in your loop. Sometimes water blocks, depending on the way they get put on, you can block a certain channel. Um, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And in the past, a flow meter, especially a digital one, like an Aqua Computers one, has helped me diagnose different problems and different things. And then you can sort of narrow it down to whatever component or part is giving you that issue. But I think the people who like water cooling may also like this sort of more intricate control of your system. So I think in general, it's definitely a plus. The fourth thing you should keep in mind when you're building your water cooled loop, that's going to be the do a good drainage system. Now, this happens a lot where, you know, somebody will build a water cooled system, but they didn't really put any way to drain it effectively in there. And when they have to take it apart for whatever reason, you end up making a mess and it's just a lot more stressful and a lot more of a headache. A few good rules of thumb to go by. Generally, you want to put your drain and now they have all these valve drains, you know, EK has them, Bits Power, a lot of companies make them. You want to put that drain on the lowest part that you can of your loop. So let's say if you have a radiator all the way at the bottom or you have a, a pump or a distribution panel that goes low, you want to put that drain all the way down at the bottom. And then basically the idea is you open up somewhere higher in your system. A lot of times there are these little valves that you can press and let air in. You let air in through a high point in your loop and that way gravity will take its role and, and kind of drain everything out through the bottom. Keep in mind, even doing something like this, and I've even done multiple drain ports on the same computer just to try to get different areas a little bit easier, like maybe the area your GPU is in, um, you know, to get different radiators. You're not always gonna be able to get all of the liquid out of the system just with the drain ports. You may have to move it around. You may not always get all the liquid out of your system, especially if it's in a radiator that's in an awkward place and sometimes in the blocks themselves. So you may have to flip your system around or worst case, you may have to take it apart. But if it's for just, normal maintenance, having the proper drainage system is definitely going to save you a lot of time, frustration, and just make your maintenance of your water-cooled loop considerably easier. The fifth and final thing about water cooling that I really enjoy it definitely adds a whole new dimension to PC building. If you never water cool, you're gonna be sort of limited by the hardware that's available in air coolers and AIOs. And a lot of times, of course, those can be fine. But as soon as you start getting into the water cooled world, you're gonna see what great variety there are. You can choose so many GPU blocks, CPU blocks. There are different types of fittings. There are so many ways to customize your system so that way it's personal to you. You can really sort of artistically express yourself in the way you do your water cooled loop many different coolant types as well as uh, different coolant colors, different ways you can bend tubes, you can use fittings, you can use soft tube, hard tube. So you open up a whole new world of PC building that's incredibly satisfying. Sometimes, keep in mind, it can be very frustrating. There have been times I've been building an intricate water-cooled loop and something goes wrong or it's not quite working. Uh, my advice is to always give it a little break, maybe you know sleep on it, put it away, come back to it the next day refreshed, take your time and work on it, turn the computer on and everything's working, your loop is running after you fill it, um, and you see those great temperatures and these beautiful colors and the coolant. So it's very satisfying when you finish, but it's not all fun and games because the build process, you know, it's a serious build process. Things can go wrong. It's very easy to get frustrated. Um, I've seen a lot of people get sick of water cooled builds just because sometimes little things go wrong in the process. So just take your time because eventually at the end, it's definitely worth it. And like I've said before, you open yourself up to so many new PC building ideas, so many more aesthetic things that you could never do if you're just water cooling or an AIO cooling your, your system. So you can definitely have a lot of really cool possibilities if you're water cooling. And that's definitely one of the main reasons why I do it. All right, guys, I hope these little tips and suggestions kind of help put some perspective on water cooling. It's definitely great. It's not without its caveats and its issues. So if you guys have any questions, remember to write a comment down below. Subscribe if you like my content, and I'll see you guys on the next video.